This video is sponsored by Ren. If the 21st century was a person, it would be Kanye West. Egotistical, narcissistic, materialistic, miserable, and politically and spiritually atomized are just some of the parallels. But no one can take away from Kanye his genius talent. He has thrust hip hop into becoming the lifeblood of millennials and zoomers. Through a mix of impeccable beats and auto tuned hymns, Kanye has elevated a generation's soul. And it's through this music and his clothing lines that Kanye has amassed over $2 billion, allowing Kanye to form connections with some of the world's most influential people. All of this while being imbued by religious faith. The expectations following a life of international praise, billions of dollars, and an array of powerful connections might have been one of fulfillment, meaning, and happiness. However, the reality for Kanye has been a completely different picture. Kanye has been labelled mentally deranged, his family is broken in front of the world, he's lost access to his children, shunned by the legacy media, and humiliated by the Hollywood elite. On the surface, he has it all, but Kanye has very little left in the inside, and ironically, the very attributes that made him successful were instrumental in his downfall. But to understand how Kanye became such a tragic paradox of the society that made him, we need to look at the whole picture. From the start, Kanye wasn't destined to be a rapper, in fact, Kanye began his adult life as a painter studying at Chicago State University. However, However, he soon enough realised that his true passion was in music. He'd always dipped his toes into the musical world, but he didn't have anything to show for it. So at the age of 20, Kanye dropped out of college to fully devote himself to his dream, spending all day at his telemarketing job and working until 4am pursuing his dream of working in the rap world. And eventually all this hard work paid off, and within a year, Kanye had secured one of his first big contracts, selling a beat to Chicago rapper Gravity for $8,000. Soon enough, Kanye was making a name for himself as a producer, working with artists like Nas and Eminem. And then four years later in 2000, Kanye was signed as a producer by Rockefeller Records. This brought him into direct contact with Jay-Z, who he'd become to partner with over the coming years. But at Rockefeller, Kanye was also working on hit songs for Alyssa Keys and Ludacris among others. But this wasn't fulfilling enough. Kanye couldn't express his true thoughts. Kanye's true aspirations was to also become a rapper. However, this was a risky move. It would mean sacrificing his cushy beat making job and potentially some of the partnerships he'd gained from it. And then just before releasing the album, Kanye was hit by a traumatic car crash. Although instead of letting this set him back, Kanye channeled this frustration into inspiration for his album writing his song Through the Wire after his jaw was wired shut after the accident. And eventually after all the strife, Kanye released his first album to massive critical acclaim, earning two Grammy nominations for his first album. It was at this point that Kanye's breakthrough was assured, later releasing his second album to even greater success. Critics would praise Kanye's meaningful lyrics and crisp production. Since then Kanye has, with few exceptions, found success in nearly all of his endeavours. As an artist, he's enjoyed the adoration of millions with his unique style, and as a businessman, Kanye has become one of the richest musicians on the planet, only much of his success to his keen sense of the fashion world. And while Kanye's egotistical and outspoken personality often landed him in hot water, his aggressive creativity has been a much stronger catalyst for his fame and fortune. His swollen and ego confidence and artistic talents makes his music stand out from the rest. Because unlike most mainstream rap, Kanye's music serves to elevate one's energy, while on the other hand, most mainstream rap serves as the background music behind gang violence and stabbings, casting kids adrift in the hopeless malaise of fried chicken in shops and p stained alleyways. But with Kanye's music, it feels like you're drinking an espresso, motivating you to follow your destiny. I'm just the espresso. I'm just a shot in the morning to get you going. And for most of Kanye's career, it's this mix of his huge ego, unrelenting narcissism, and uplifting music that rose him to the top. But while his popularity was hitting an all-time high, for Kanye, it would be around the same time that his popularity would go from a blessing to a curse. In this time, Kanye's outlandish behaviour rocketed his fame and granted Kanye access into the upper echelons of the celebrity hierarchy. And what better reward for his exorbitant wealth, grand ego, and relentless narcissism than a wife called Kim Kardashian, one of the world's most vacuous, plastic, empty figurines. A woman who represents nothing but a gaping vacuum of feckless vacuity. So from 2011 onwards, Kim and Kanye fell in love, and in 2013, their first child, Northwest, was born. Everything was perfect. Or so it seemed. Because behind this golden facade were cracks that couldn't be ignored. The heavy weight of such a fake and hollow lifestyle was taking a toll on Kanye. Now this isn't unusual. There actually seems to be a consistent pattern of celebrities breaking away from the celebrity bubble. Russell Brand, Joe Rogan, Morrissey and Jim Carrey. But none received so much vicious pushback from the establishment as Kanye West. This all started when Kanye would begin voicing his political and social concerns. In multiple interviews, Kanye would describe his frustrations with the victim mentality being instilled in black Americans. Claiming that this victimhood mentality is what keeps black people docile and easily controlled by groups like Black Lives Matter. Racism is a, a dated concept. It's not an actual thing. 
that even means anything. You know, it's something that was used to hold people back in the past, but now there's been so many leaps and breaking of the rules that it's like, it's played out like, you know, like a style from the, you know, 1800s or something. The controversy around these statements would only continue to budget, especially when Kanye posted a selfie wearing a Make America Great Again hat, saying, quote, my MAGA hat is signed. He would then go on to say things like how Obama was in office for eight years and yet Chicago never changed, continually attacking the establishment Democrats. So of course, the Washington Post declared Kanye an alt-right darling, with BuzzFeed claiming that Kanye was becoming radicalized, and CNN adding that Kanye needed to be canceled. It was clear that Kanye was now the next big target for the mob. These sorts of ridiculous things that are usually promoted by white nationalists, uh, by fringe groups, by fringe individuals, mostly on the internet, uh, that promote racist ideas. But what scared the establishment the most was that Kanye wasn't alone, with other rappers like Chance the Rapper defending Kanye, claiming black people don't have to be Democrats. But even more importantly, with his huge influence over the hearts and minds of millions, Kanye's rhetoric was breaking down the narratives perpetuated by the government and media. His counter-narratives to the dominant cultural institutions on the topics of abortion, black-on-black -black violence, and a support of Trump brought Kanye heated pushback, eventually culminating in Kanye getting suspended from Twitter and ridiculed by the media, Hollywood, the entertainment industry, and the music industry. Y'all been lied to. Radio lied to you. They can't play what they want to play because they've been paid to play that bullshit. Soon enough, the cultural institutions and celebrities that praised Kanye's ego and success were now his biggest enemies. And after Kanye released a statement to TMZ claiming that slavery is a choice, Kanye's life would begin to take a very dark turn. It was after the statement that Kanye was forcibly taken into a mental hospital in 2016 where he would be stuffed with pills. And they medicated me for saying that, for having that opinion and saying it out loud. After making too many statements that didn't fit into the cultural narrative, they would use Kanye's forced hospitalization to make him look crazy, to make sure that no one took him seriously. I just tell the truth, and telling the truth is crazy in a world full of lies. So Kanye was now drugged up, pilloried by the media, and stuck in a vicious lifestyle of showbiz and entertainment. By being confined and boxed into this lifestyle of medication, vacuous celebritism, narcissism, and mockery for his Christian political views, Kanye's genius was now decimated. The medication fucked with your creativity. It fucked with all kinds of things. Or it blocked my ability to channel what God wanted me to do. The pills, the hospitalization, the toxic celebrity lifestyle made Kanye a shell of who he really was. The ingredients to his initial success had been turned against him by the high society he'd been so desperate to enter. This grayed Kanye's personality, tranquilizing and sedating him into a passive numbness. But luckily for Kanye, these actions would only serve to catalyze his impassioned beliefs, becoming even more involved in the political sphere. With nothing to lose, he would go out of his way to meet and discuss social issues with Trump and the White House. All to the outrage of blue check marks and giant media companies like CNN. What I saw was a minstrel show today. Him in front of all of these white people, mostly white people, embarrassing himself and embarrassing Americans, but mostly African Americans. And now all of a sudden, he is the person who represents the African American community. He doesn't. This was an embarrassment. Kanye's mother is rolling over in her grave. Kanye was now risking everything. His family, his career, his connections and influence. But still, he would put down all his chips for his most ambitious project yet, becoming the president of the United States. Quote, we must now realize the promise of America by trusting God, unifying our vision and building our future. I am running for president of the United States. United States, hashtag 2020 vision. Kanye would then later claim that his true calling in life was to be the leader of the free world. I, I, I believe that my calling is to be the leader of the free world. While public figures like Elon Musk rushed to his support, his presidential campaign was only seen as a meme at best and a delusional ego trip by most. With his presidential campaign being met with suspicion for just being a marketing ploy for his upcoming Donda album. And there was some credence to this. I mean, his whole campaign contained very little substance with no organizing or concentrated promotion. In fact, Kanye's campaign even missed the filing deadline to appear on the ballot as an independent candidate in the last six states. With these political plans and presidential objectives being widely mocked for being an incoherent Wishy washy dream. I mean, you will be the commander in chief of the greatest army the world has ever known. If you're in that position and we have to deal with some sort of a uh, military action with China, what if China takes over Taiwan? What if they invade Taiwan? What if uh, something happens with Syria? What if something happens with Iran? What if something happens with Russia? And you 
have to make decisions about military action. Have you thought about this? It was clear that this was far from a serious presidential run, evidenced by his lack of clarity, disorganization, and chaotic rallies. I mean, his very first presidential rally resulted in him breaking down in tears about the potential abortion of his child. <laughs> With all this disorganization, muddled political objectives, and chaotic presidential rallies, Kanye's chances of winning were slim to say the least. The only thing that could save his campaign was support from the socialites surrounding him. But most like Oprah and his wife would be quick to tell him to stop his political campaign. And those on the left, who initially supported Kanye's denouncement of George Bush in 2005, would now be using the same arguments against him. George Bush doesn't care about black people. Kanye's big gamble was now turning into a disaster. With his swollen ego being surrounded by Yes Men and hollow reality stars, Kanye seemed to genuinely believe he would impact politics. And while his views might seem universally popular, he had no alliance from the right or left. His connections to Trump and megachurch preachers like Joel Osteen alienated him from the left, and his racial politics and vocal support of men like Malcolm X alienated Kanye from the right, all of which resulting in an embarrassing 60,000 votes out of 160 million votes, or in other words, 0.0375% of the vote most of which were entirely joke votes. This embarrassing outcome was one of the first major blows to Kanye's ego, but it would only get worse from there, because in the same time as Kanye's failing presidential campaign was his failing marriage. The first sign of this was during Kanye's unsuccessful presidential campaign, when Kanye would release personal information about Kim and their family. West then tweeted and deleted a series of statements about how Kim was trying to quote, lock him up and how she wants a divorce. And then by 2021, it was revealed that Kim had began filing for divorce. And this wasn't just any old divorce. This was a whole beast of its own, trapping Kanye into an isolating box that would drive anyone else insane. Now, as I already mentioned, Kanye had become increasingly more religious and political as he grew into fatherhood. And it was this breakaway from the hollow fake entertainment industry that inevitably caused a breakaway from his family, a family known to be one of the most plastic, vacuous families in the upper echelons of high society. But unfortunately for Kanye, it was only once he had his children did he realize how trapped he really was, resulting in Kanye often taken to social media to discuss how he feels like the Kardashians are actively trying to brainwash him with medication, conform him to turn down his black heritage for marketing purposes, with Kim's mum threatening to cut him out of the family entirely if he did not silence his often controversial views. So it should be no surprise that once the divorce was initiated, Kanye felt the full wrath of the media, his family, and the entertainment bubble against him. Kanye was now spiritually, politically, and socially atomized. He was now pilloried as a crazy, radical, right-wing stalker. Kanye has often said in recent interviews that this is an intentional smear campaign by the family, with him even naming Kim's publicist as leaking specific quotes to the press to fan the flames. Kanye would then see his wife go on SNL to laugh at the divorce and Kanye's behavior, finishing off the show by kissing Pete Davidson. And that is when Kanye's life would turn completely upside down. You see, Kanye had everything. He had all the fame and fortune he could have dreamed of. The only things he now didn't have was his wife and children. In the following months, Kanye would be barred from visiting his children's birthday parties, having to go through a screen of Kim's security before even saying hi to his children. And while Kanye was stopped from seeing his children by Kim's security, Pete Davidson would now be playing with his own kids. And then to make things worse, Kanye's child North would create a TikTok account and go live on the app to millions. Kanye immediately requested his children stay off social media, but this request was never taken seriously. In fact, Kim actually made North a TikTok account and helped her post on it every day. In response, Kanye would come out with multiple angry social media posts, claiming that, quote, World, what do I do? I've asked her as a father a million times to keep North off social media. She agrees and then helps her do it? The media says I'm the bad guy, please help me. And then in response to this ongoing feud, Pete Davidson would text Kanye about being in bed with his wife and calling Kanye a little internet bitch boy. And ever since, Kanye has been on a downward spiral, propelled not only by his opinion, Opinions, fame, family, and ego, but also by the establishment he was so desperate to enter. The media that catalyzed his fame now relishes his demise. Kanye's gotten his life to a position where he could succeed at anything. A billionaire, world famous rapper with an elite clothing line and an array of powerful connections. He'd achieved nearly everything he wanted, but it was through gaining these achievements he started to realize how toxic the celebrity lifestyle truly was. He understood how isolating the me first ethos of the elite is, and by understanding how poisonous the ideologies and belief systems propagated by the 
dominant culture were, Kanye was trapped into a corner. He could either sell his creativity and soul, bloating himself with pills and letting his children and mind rot under the light of a warped celebrity culture, or he could turn his back on the system that made him famous and successful. And by bravely choosing the latter, Kanye is now single, detached from his children and shunned by those around him, currently residing in a mega mansion all to himself. In his own words, I lost my spouse. I'm the only billionaire sleeping on the couch. If any story could serve as a warning to the destructive cultural mindsets burped out by our postmodern society, it would be the story of Kanye West. The toxic societal beliefs that led to Kanye's tragic downfall are bad enough, but our postmodern society is also bringing about a toxic world for all of us. And one of the main issues is that our overconsumption lifestyle is emitting lots of CO2 without us even realizing it. And scientists predict that this will lead to catastrophic climate change in years to come, but it can be tough to know how to cut down our own CO2 emissions. However, it turns out that the website REN is a simple and effective way to make a difference in the climate crisis. REN is a website where by answering questions about your lifestyle, you can calculate your carbon footprint and how you can reduce it. REN then lets you offset your carbon footprint by funding a diverse mix of carbon reduction projects, like tree planting and rain forest protection. And once you're signed up to make a monthly contribution to offset your carbon footprint, you will receive monthly updates from the project you support. One of my personal favorite projects is their tech-enabled Amazon rainforest protection in Peru, which gives indigenous Amazonians the tools they need to protect their rainforest home, all through the use of satellite monitoring and drones to detect deforestation early, allowing indigenous Amazonians to take back power from corporations destroying the Amazon rainforest. But you can start helping today by learning more on Ren.co. The first 100 people who sign up using the link in the description will have 10 extra trees planted in their name.